Welcome back. Now, in the last video, we took the thousand foot view of Bluetooth low energy. And now we're going to drill down to the physical layer and see what makes the radio tick. Let's warm up that radio and dive right in. Now, what makes Bluetooth low energy cool is that it gets to reuse a lot of the hardware from conventional Bluetooth. We'll start by comparing the physical characteristics of the Bluetooth basic rate and enhanced data rate radio the Bluetooth low energy radio that was embodied in version 4.2 of the Bluetooth specification, and the latest implementation, the Bluetooth 5 low energy radio. Now, by the way, notice that there's no longer a point version, it's just Bluetooth 5. And the low energy components are fully integrated into the specification. Uh, we'll keep calling it BLE for now, but just know that the Bluetooth SIG is trying really hard to get everyone on the same page. Everything Bluetooth 5 is just Bluetooth. Now we started out by noting that Bluetooth Low Energy uses a lot of the common elements inherited from standard Bluetooth. One look at the operating band and the modulation techniques confirms that. All flavors of Bluetooth operate on the 2.4 GHz ISM band. This band runs from 2.4 GHz to 2.5 gigahertz, and it's completely license-free worldwide. Unsurprisingly, there's a lot of equipment trying to operate in this band, and Bluetooth, in all its versions, employs a frequency hopping technology to keep interference to a minimum. Now, with regard to modulation, all versions of Bluetooth radios are required to include Gaussian frequency shift keying as an option. GFSK beats traditional FM because it occupies narrower channels while getting the same amount of information across. Conventional Bluetooth also supports enhanced data rate transmission using quadrature differential phase shift keying and 8-way DPSK. Bluetooth Low Energy doesn't support these modes. BLE5 adds support for coding at the physical layer to improve range and reliability in noisy environments. The important thing is this. If you have a radio that supports conventional Bluetooth, the physical radio can also support BLE without changing the frequency band or the data modulation techniques. Now range. For conventional Bluetooth devices, the range is largely dependent on transmit power, and conventional Bluetooth devices are grouped into three broad power classes. Power class 1, the highest, with up to 100 milliwatts of power to the antenna all the way down to power class 3 that supports only 1 milliwatt of power to the antenna. Thus, the range can vary from about 10 to over 100 meters. Bluetooth Low Energy had about the same range in the 4.2 version, but in BLE5, the new coded PHI and higher transmit power mean that you can reach 600 meters or more. One test was able to transmit 1,600 meters in an open range. Now, the ability to get this kind of range with modest power is one reason that BLE5 is a game changer. Now, from the beginning, Bluetooth has supported a power class 1 with maximum output power of 100 milliwatts. For battery operated gear, well, this is really a lot of power, and while it might be okay for a notebook computer to emit this kind of power, for equipment with a battery expected to last many months or even years, it's a non starter. When BLE came along, the maximum output power was reduced to just 10 milliwatts. But BLE5 raises the output power to 100 milliwatts again. Why is this? It's because BLE5 recognizes that things like sensor nodes may transmit only infrequently, maybe just once a day. But when they do transmit, they really need to be heard. Now that makes BLE5 much more practical for lots of nodes that aren't necessarily in close proximity. For raw data rate, both Bluetooth and Bluetooth Low Energy started out at 1 megabit per second. From there, they diverged in different directions. Conventional Bluetooth needed more throughput, so the Bluetooth SIG added new modulation techniques to increase raw data rate first to 2 megabits per second, and then to 3 megabits per second, Bluetooth Low Energy stayed with GFSK modulation. But in BLE5, they added a coded PHI. That allows the PHI to use either 2 or 8 symbols to represent one bit. 
and that redundancy provides extended range and better interference rejection at the expense of the data rate. At 2 symbols per bit, you get only 500 kilobits per second, and at 8 symbols per bit, you get just 128 kilobits per second. Now, the SIG also added a double data rate option that bumps the BLE speed up to 2 megabits per second. All well and good. But what does that mean for the real world? Well, protocol overhead limits basic rate Bluetooth to only about 700 kilobits per second, enough for audio and some video streams, but with EDR, the throughput got a boost to 2.1 megabits per second. Now, of course, BLE wasn't intended to be a high-speed protocol. Its transmit time constraints limit it to about 270 kilobits per second, and that's okay for short messages and tight data packets, but not so much for streaming. Now, with BLE5, your throughput depends on your need. If range and data reliability is paramount, you'll use the coded PHY, and your throughput is going to be low, maybe 30 kilobits per second. But if you need higher throughput, and range really isn't an issue, you can use the new double data rate option, and you'll get as much as 1.4 megabits per second. As you can see, BLE5 is really flexible. Now, let's talk about the physical layout of the frequency bands. Bluetooth defined 79 channels spaced 1 megahertz apart. BLE, needing a simpler transmitter and receiver, called for only 40 channels that were spaced at 2 megahertz intervals. BLE5 keeps the channels and spacing of the earlier BLE system, and thus it maintains compatibility. Finally, let's talk about what makes Bluetooth Low Energy a superior choice to Bluetooth when it comes to sensors and beacons and keyboards. First, latency. The minimum latency for a Bluetooth connection, and that is the elapsed time from the instant the data is presented to the radio at the transmitter to the instant the data is available at the receiver, is about a tenth of a second. If you're typing, that's a noticeable delay. But in either BLE flavor, that time is reduced to 6 milliseconds. And the time to send the first block of data is even more stark. In regular Bluetooth, the time it takes for the Bluetooth radio to be ready to transmit is a tenth of a second. But in any BLE radio, it's just 3 milliseconds. This makes a huge difference for an interactive system. Okay, I understand this is a lot of information, but the key takeaway is this. Bluetooth Low Energy gave Bluetooth something it desperately needed, a way to send low-density data from battery-powered sensors and keyboards. And BLE5 just makes BLE faster, more robust, and a lot more flexible. Now let's take a look at the channel layout. We mentioned before, BLE lives in the 2.4 GHz ISM band. Now, by the way, ISM stands for Industrial, Scientific, and Medical, and that was the original intent. It was a band for equipment that needed to use microwave frequencies for purposes other than communication. But today, the ISM band is used primarily for wireless communication over short ranges without obtaining a license to exclusively use a particular frequency. But there's a catch. Equipment operating in the ISM band must not cause interference to any licensed services, and it must accept any interference that comes its way. Now, because of these requirements, the access rules and frequency assignments must be carefully planned. The ISM band used by Bluetooth runs from 2.4 GHz to 2.5 GHz through most of the world. But in the United States, the frequencies above 2483.5 MHz are used for satellite phone service. Now, below 2400 MHz is the amateur radio 13 cm band, which is often used for mesh networking. The ISM band from 2402 MHz to 2480 MHz is divided into 40 channels, and each channel is 2 MHz wide. 37 of these channels are considered bearer channels, that is, they're designed to carry user data. Bluetooth radios will transmit on one of these channels for a brief time, then hop to another bearer channel, and thus minimize any interference with other transmitters, and there are a lot of them on the ISM bands. Now, three channels at 2402 MHz, 2426 MHz, 
and 2480 MHz are called advertisement channels. When a BLE device needs to connect, it will transmit its identity and capabilities on these three channels until it is discovered. Now, why these frequencies? Mostly to work around Wi-Fi. Most Wi-Fi routers operate on channels 1, 6, and 11 because those are the only three Wi-Fi channels that don't overlap other Wi-Fi channels. A BLE device wishing to be discovered will transmit an advertisement on all three channels, and once discovered, the stations will switch to a bearer channel and begin the frequency hopping regimen. Notice that BLE5 allows advertisements to be transmitted on any or all of the 40 channels, but it risks not being found by older equipment if it uses this capability. Okay, so that's how the Bluetooth Low Energy Radio works. 37 bearer channels, 3 channels dedicated to advertising the presence and identity of the device. And it's the advertising that sets BLE apart from regular Bluetooth. Now in the next installment, we're going to look in detail how advertising works. See you then!